Okay, so after this pasuk here, where where uh, uh, Hashem told Yeshua, okay, get up, kum lach, get up, lama zeta no fel panecha. Why are you falling on your face? Um, you the, the stuff the stuff you have to do. Things went wrong here, right? Um, and this is what Malvi says, kum lach lama ti. Don't why are you complaining against me? Why people died at I? There's a good reason for this. There's a reason shakarma siluk ashgachu which we. Cause me to remove my um, assistance to you. You have to remove this cause for me not to help you guys out. Ruki, and that's what we're going to see in the next puzzle. Chata Israel, the Jews sin. The Gam of Ruz, we see, they also violated my covenant, my agreement. I should see this so much I commanded them. The Gam of Chumen Acherem. And they also took from the forbidden uh, 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 um, loot. The they also stole. The gam they also denied it. The gam and they all people also put it in their own uh, vessels. In other words, they took stuff home with them. So it's a very strange puzzle because it says they did this and they did that and they did this and they did that, and really. It doesn't seem like they did all those things. They just there was one guy that's going to find out Achan who actually stole from the Cherem. He he took stuff which stuff he shouldn't take, and that was the problem. So why does he say that they uh, they um, um, they gam of Rus B.C. the gam of Chul the Cherem the gam Gonvu the gam Kichashu the gam Somer Chleim. Also this, also that, also that. So the Malvim says Chat Yisrael Peres Shayach over here. There was a double sin. Aleph, one, Mahusa The essence of the sin. Gigam of Rubris SBC. They violated my covenant, the agreement. Shu Chilo Shabbos. Now, evidently, the bris here is the bris we talk about every week on Shabbos. The Osi Beim Israel, the sign between Hashem and Israel. The bridge between Hashem and the Jewish people, which is Shabbos. So the first thing they did, and the thing which is worse, is Chil Shabbos. Because they took stuff from a public area, which is called Rishus Arabim, to a private area, which is called Rishus Ayachid, and now I do that Shabbos, unless there's an Eruv. So they violated Shabbos by carrying stuff, which they're not allowed to carry on Shabbos. So therefore, how do we know that? Young Kibu Shibicho Yabba Shabbos. Because they conquered Yericho on Shabbos. So to take the loot from Yericho was forbidden. There was no way, there was no walls, the walls fell down. And the sides they carried uh, were outside where the walls were, back to where the, old, the camp was. So therefore, they violated Shabbos. They, they, they broke the bris between the Jews and Hashem. And Shabbos Nikras Bris, because the, the, there's a bris between Hashem and Bnei Israel, which is keeping Shabbos. It says in Kiddush Shabbos morning uh, that, that we're, we're supposed to make Shabbos for all our generations because it's a bris. It's a covenant between us and our Kodesh Also, they took uh, from the Cherem over on Shabbos or Cherem Shamayim. They violated Shabbos and they took the stuff they're not supposed to take. Okay, so that is the sin they did. That's the sin. But there's something else also. Uh, the way they did the sin. The sins were two. They call it Shabbos and taking forbidden root. But how they did the sins is about the rest of the people. the rest of the people. In Yanachet, the Gam Ganvu they stole. Shalolochum Faresio. Rakmeneva Vagabahester. They didn't take in public. They took in, in like a thief who comes in the middle of the night and steals something in secret. That's there and in secret. I, I, I don't know if you remember from the Torah itself, this, but in, in Parsh Mishpatim, it says that if you uh, are Ganav, you pay kefir, pay double the, what you stole, and another amount equal to what you stole. And by Gizela, where you take something in public, not in secret, you only pay once. You pay for what you stole. And Chazal say, what's the difference between Gneva and Gizela? In Gizela, at least you're not you're not afraid neither of Hashem nor of human beings. Therefore, you sin in public. So that's bad, but it's not as bad as when you're a Ghana. Because you're a Ghana, sin in private, and that shows you're not afraid of Hashem. So 
because you're willing to uh, violate Hashem's commandment, the Ro Signov, but you're afraid of human beings. And therefore, you do it in private so people shouldn't see you. That, so Chazal say that's worse. To do something in secret because you're afraid of other human beings and not afraid of Hashem is worse than not being afraid of anybody. So therefore, it says, uh, Yoshua, you know what? The way you did this, uh, the Hashem says, Yoshua, the way they did the sin makes it worse. If they would have gone in public and said, okay, we're taking from the loot here. We want the loot. We're going to take it and let's make a public deal out of it. So that would be bad. But what's worse is that they took it in secret and they thought, okay, we're afraid of human beings. But Hashem, he's, Hashem, not, Hashem doesn't see us. So that makes it worse. And that was how they did the sin. Gam Ganvu, they didn't take it in public. They took it in, in private. With that, and with this, Gam Kachashu, they also denied. Why they deny? Like I just said, they deny that Hashem pays attention. And they made the eye of Hashem, the eye on high, so it doesn't see. So they it was a double sin, a sin that they didn't just take, but they took it in secret, which meant, means that they didn't believe that Hashem actually is watching them. Okay, that's the second thing. So we had the sin itself, which is Chilu Shabbos and taking the forbidden loot. The way they did it, which they did it in secret, and with that, they denied that Hashem actually is watching us and sees what we do. And Gimel, the third thing the Pastor says us, but the pur purpose of the sin. Interesting, fascinating thing the Mama says. He says, listen, if somebody's is, is, during the Holocaust, people stole food. They were hungry. They needed food, right? People are poor. They steal because they need money. People are uh, people who steal because they need what they stole, stole, either because they need money or they need food, they need medicine or whatever they need. So it's bad, but it's, at least there's a pur it's it's for a purpose, and the purpose is something which we can understand. But what happens if somebody steals and then they just hide it? They don't use it; they just put it away. That means they're stealing almost for the purpose of stealing in itself. They're not stealing for a, 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 a for a, so to speak a good cause. They're stealing because they want to steal, and they want to have more stuff. You know, it's like like a miser, a person who collects money and doesn't intend to spend it. He just wants to have the money. So he's worse than a person who who, who steals who collects money in order to enjoy it. At least he's do wants to enjoy the money. But this guy, he's not even enjoying the money. He's just doing. He's just um, keeping the money in his safe and not doing anything with it. So here to the same thing. What happened over here is that he says. Uh, the person who stole here did not require what he stole. Somebody claim they put it in their own vessel. She mean about it's a hit in the ground. Daniel talk about it, didn't need it. We're gonna see it's the person who stole stole the stuff. He didn't use the stuff that he stole. He didn't need it. He was rich. He had what he needed in this world. He stole because he saw an opportunity to steal. That's worse. So again, we have three issues in the puzzle. That's why it says gam, 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 gam. It says that first of all. Um, Chata Israel, how so? The gam of rules we see are shown in CBC also. The first thing, two things are the sin themselves, what they sin themselves. Gam of rules we see are shown in CBC also. Gam of chumin achim. They, by the Mechal Shabbos, the bris between Hashem and Am Yisrael, and they also took from the loot and not allowed to take, weren't allowed to take. That was the sin itself. How did they do this? They did it in a very, very inappropriate way. Much more inappropriate. They would have just taken it publicly. They took it in secret and they denied this way that Hashem is watching them. They're just concerned about human beings but Hashem, not about Hashem. Uh, watching them, not about Hashem watching them. And the purpose of the sin was also, the purpose of the sin was also made the sin worse. Because if they were stealing for the purpose of using something, they or they needed it in some way, that's one thing. Like somebody claimed they just put it into storage. They just kept it without any need for it, without any usage for it. That makes it worse. Okay, so all these the pastor is telling us in these three, in, in, in three different things, what the sin was, how they sinned, and what the purpose of the sin was, and all those things are very bad. So therefore, the law yochlu bnei Yisrael, let's be base. Weren't bnei Yisrael not able to come with heaven? We weren't able to rise up against their enemies. Or if you've news they turned their necks to their enemies. In other words, they ran away. 
Because they themselves became something set aside. Cherem is something which we used before in the pre in the previous was They took from something which is set aside they weren't supposed to use. So Mida connected Mida because they did that. They themselves were Cherem. Hashem put put them aside. Said, "I'm not going to help you out." Just like they took with that which is supposed to be separated, Hashem separated himself from them. I'm not going to be with you anymore. Unless you eliminate the cherem which is amongst you, unless you get rid of that vera which that person committed when he took from the cherem. It says the Malbim. Velo, velo and since you did all these things wrong, you were not able to rise in front of your enemies. Who be able to say yeah, but stay steady. People on the on the crowd shot. Yeah. I think we probably pasted it enough times. Okay, so explains this comes from two sides. One, the uh, the 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 naturally they lost the war. The the naturally they lost the war. If or if if knew they turned around and ran away. Yan kio Now I don't know if I would call this naturally, but he says there's a certain. While if a person commits a sin, so they feel guilty. If they feel guilty, they're not going to be able to fight well. Or you have to go into battle with high morale. Right? You have to be confident, and you have to know that I, I, I I'm good. I'm going to do good. I'm I'm going to we're fighting for a worthy cause. We're going to succeed. We're going to be makadosh Hashem. But if you know you're going to battle when you committed a sin, so then you're not going to fight the same way. You know there's something wrong, something something is inappropriate, and you messed up, and therefore you're not going to say not going to fight properly. And that just says shuskula sacherem, the unique quality of having taken what they shouldn't take. Ratil meera made a uh, made a damage, bekeicham, in their power laachlisham gametava to make them naturally weaker. The avera itself, and the guilt over the sin. Made them weaker. They were not be not going to be successful. Why? Again, a sin damages you spiritually, and also diminishes your and makes you gives you less morale. You don't have the same courage because you know you're doing something wrong. That's why the Torah says in uh, in Parsha Shoftim in the Dvarim it says there are all sorts of things which a person should not go to war if they just got married, they just got a new vineyard, they just built a new house. Because they won't have them, they won't feel like fighting. If they won't feel like fighting, they won't fight well. So therefore, they should just go home. It's detrimental to have them in the army, and that's where they did. But the Gemara also says that when it says the Gemara, when it says in the Chumash, somebody who is afraid should go home. It means somebody's afraid because they did averos, and somebody's afraid because they did averos is not going to fight properly, because Am Yisrael knows if we do sin, if we sin, then Hashem not going to be on our side. So we feel not confident. We feel like we don't have the courage, don't have the power. So that's that's he's saying. A doing the avera itself is a problem. It makes it, it makes Amiso less worthy of Hashem helping them out. But B, it also makes them feel weaker and less and less capable of fighting because they know we committed a sin. The sin itself and knowing you committed a sin both diminish your strength. They said that's the first part of puzzle, right? Uh, they themselves are said, pushed aside, pushed aside because of their sin, and also because they feel themselves we messed up. Okay, also that Hashem's not going to help them out. Besides, they're messing up on their side. Hashem's not going to help them out with his with his help. I'm not going to be with you. I'm not going to help you out unless you remove. The cherem, unless you take a, uh, fix the sin, which you sin. Gamit na, Hashem also made a condition. He said, them to get up and, and overcome their enemies. You know that they should have natural courage. It's enough that the cherem should not be with them. So she they should burn whatever they stole from the cherem, whatever was supposed to not be taken. Find it and burn it. Like it says in the next Pasuk, it says in the next Pasuk, 
You won't be able to defeat your enemies and to remove the loot which you shouldn't have taken, because that's the that, that's that's all that's going. I'm not, I'm not going to help you out until that happens. Aval, but the uh, there's more than that. But for Hashem to be with you completely, they got to not just get rid of the loot. But they have to destroy. And the word destroy is a very strange word. Shiashmidu. Shmad usually means to destroy a person, right? Destroy people, not just destroy property. So it says the mob, you know, it says Shiashmidu. Shiashmidu achem rikibam, who ashmidu ish ava They have to kill the person who committed the sin. That when people do very bad things, we believe in the death penalty. And people do something very bad, they have to be put to death. Oh, that you only are able to fix society in certain cases where the person who committed that beira is removed from society. Where he's removed from society is being by being killed. So therefore, lo It's not enough that the cherem, the loot itself, you get rid of. You have to destroy haover al cherem. Somebody who the people who violated the cherem malpiyadama. We have that in the Megillah. It says, Lashmid la rog la betis kola yudin. Right? Lashmid means not just to destroy property, not just to restore property which is stolen, but to destroy the person who did bad things. There in the Megillah, it means Hashem and Muhammad want to destroy us. Right? But in that folk, we destroy Haman. But the idea is that Hashem is saying, you know what? In order that I should be able to be with you again, you got to do to him, you got to do not just get rid of the Loot which was taken, which is illegal, but you also get rid of the person who did that thing. Because Hashem only helps us out if we're functioning properly as a nation. And properly as a nation means that we make sure that our society is a holy society. And the only way we can make sure our society is a holy society is by getting rid of the people who are wicked and take away from the holiness of society. That's what Hashem is telling you. It's a very harsh lesson. Obviously, we prefer not to have to do that. But evidently, this, the, the, uh, Hashem is saying, in this case, there's nothing short of death which is going to uh, help you get rid of this damage which you did to yourself. That person has to die. Okay, and that's the next plus it says. Kum uh, uh, Go and make the people whole. Now, Kadesh sometimes means uh, 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 and the Matsuna Sion says what it means here invite them, designate them, come to get together. You know, it's, the simple giant bus could be get everybody together, make a gathering, so we're going to find out, we're going to find out who did something wrong, and you're going to take care of it. But it also means the nation lost Kedusha by this person committing the sin. And by this person committing, so therefore you have to restore the Kedusha. How are you going to restore the Kedusha? If you want me to be with you, you have to be an Am Kadosh. You have to be a holy nation. You have to be a holy, a holy nation. I could be a holy nation again. So he says, I'll tell you. Again, it could mean that everybody got the mother. It means I want you to mark being holy, come holy again. This is what Hashem said. You saw there's something forbidden within you, Am Yisrael. You won't be able to get up in front of your enemy and destroy and, and, and overcome them. And so you remove that from within you. Okay? So uh, Hashem says, we have to fix, it. there's a big problem, deep down, that your Kedusha has been hurt by taking from the Chayim. We have to take care of this. Okay, so he says, Lo tuchalaku, says the Mahabim, Ad has yuchem achem, Lo is kilem at tenai He didn't mention here the, uh, the second condition, which had a previous passage, Shaloya Hashem Kirbam Achi Ashmidu Achem until that that Hashem's not gonna be with them until they destroy the Khem Shula Shmida Mobachem, which means to kill the person who did it. This part just says Han Hasir Khemachem. So remove it. Don't say until you destroy the person who did it. Hanao, like it said, Pasaka Goy then. Why not? Kilo Ratu Shiedu Shayishayevo Ber Misa. Hashem didn't want your show to publicize that. The person who 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 committed the sin is going to die. Why not? 
because then the sinner is not going to want to confess his sin. In this case, there are no witnesses. Nobody saw it happen. Normally, a Jewish, in a Jewish court of law, if you have to prove something happened, you need witnesses. But here are no witnesses because he was a kana. He did it in private, in secret. So therefore, the only way you can catch him is by him confessing the crime. So let's say you come to somebody and say, you know what? You should confess, and then I'll kill you. So nobody's going to want to confess. So Hashem says to them, Hashem says, when you call the people together tomorrow to bring that, make them holy again, to bring things back the way they were, just tell uh, them, just tell them that they have to uh, uh, get rid of the, the the property which was stolen. And that way, the person who did the sin, not realizing it's going to be put to death, will confess the sin. Okay. So therefore, tell them, rock. Tanaya Rishon now, just the first condition that they have to get rid of the property. Don't tell them that whoever did it has to be killed. Okay, so uh, Baruch was giving you a sugar good advice. You want to find out who it was. <laughs> so so don't tell them they're going to die as a result. Okay, so uh, so he says here, um, um, uh, in the morning, when you get together, so then everybody should come according to their shaven. And the shaven, which Hashem catches, and I don't know if you remember this, but they made a a, a lottery. And whichever shaven comes up into the lottery, Yikravli Mishpachot is going to be divided to their families. And the family that Hashem so shows you is guilty through lottery. Tikrav Batim is going to be divided into households. His family said many households. And the house is going to be caught by, uh, by, uh, by the lottery. So they should then go by people in the house. So they're first going to find out which shaver is this. Then they're going to find out which family in the shaver is this. Then they're going to find out which household in the in, in the family is responsible, and then they'll find out which individual is responsible. Once they found that out, find out by the the person who's caught in the have in the cherem, having done this forbidden thing, taking the the loot and not supposed to take, he's sorry for it. She should be burned. Also, he has kosher learned everything he owns. He has priest Hashem because he violated the bris with Hashem. And also, he son of Balabi, so he did something very bad among the Jewish people. In other words, he caused every people to die as a result. And he says, Because he took from the Cheren, which in itself was supposed to be burned. The stuff they took from from uh, from uh, Yericho was supposed to be all burnt, all the Cheren. Mida Kenegam Mida, he took some which is supposed to be burnt. Himself, he has to be right. Dino's family has to be run. He avarit so much of chata neger amakom. He sinned against Hashem. Shava briso, he violated Hashem's bris with Am Yisrael. The negative Yisrael, and he did a bad thing in Israel, not just to Hashem. Kinan shuaidam, because people were killed as a result of him. So two things here. First of all, he sinned to Hashem that he took from the chayim was supposed to. Besides that, he sinned to. Uh, I, I because people died at I, because Ochan, the person we're going to find out, is the, took took from the chair, but they're not supposed to. So that he did two problems here. So therefore, um, he is has to be punished for both of them. Upirish and explains should be tzara v'aras acherem. Ruim is safe. Really, he should be burnt because he by the chair. Because the chair is supposed to be burnt. He took stuff that's supposed to be burnt. He should be burnt himself. But that's not what happened here. The end. They stoned him. Why was he stoned? He should have been burned. He was stoned anyway. Because he violated Shabbos. The Chai of Skila and somebody who violated Shabbos is supposed to be stoned to death. Like anybody else who, who's subject to two death penalties. Obviously, you can't kill you twice. So what do we do? We do the more severe death penalty. And stoning is more severe than burning a person to death. So therefore, I can't, I, they can't suck loo. They've stoned him, not just him. Tam Shoro is oxen, Chamoro, 
his donkeys. So their death should be no lighter than their owner's death. So again, this is something which Hashem is telling them, you must, besides getting rid of the cheren, of the thing itself, you have to take care of the Averos, and the Averos were very severe, not because he didn't just sin against me, he caused other Jews to die. And that's why he has to be punished, uh, has to be punished with the most stringent punishment, which in this case is for the Chil Shabbos, he has to be stoned to death. So the, uh, 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 nowadays, we don't like talking about being, being, putting people to death. Death penalty is a very controversial thing nowadays. And uh, the truth is that in Judaism also, we don't like putting people to death. It's uh, Chazal say that if there was a Sanhedrin which killed once every seven years, according to another version, every 70 years, once in 70 years, once in 70 years, they were called a murder, a, a killing Sanhedrin. It was held against them. We usually don't like to, to putting people to death, but there's an exception to that rule. Sometimes that rules when Hashem tells us we have to put somebody to death. So Hashem tells you this when Hashem, Hashem says certain people have to be put to death because they're so wicked that they have to be eliminated. They, they take away so much pollution from Am Yisrael, they're so bad they have to be eliminated. When Hashem tells us that, then we have, we have to do it. We have no choice. I, I want to say something here a little bit off on a tangent, which is that the um, in Judaism, most, most of us in Judaism, not everybody, most of us believe in reincarnation. That is, um, I talk about this in class once. The soul can come back again. The soul does come back again and again. So even Achan, who was bad in this, and did something very bad in this Gilgal, in this, in this life's lifespan, he, has a he, gets, he, he has all my bar. And we can add that because his, his, his death atoned for the very bad thing he does. Because anytime a person is put to death, it's mechaper for his avera. Besides that, you can come back in another guild. And go back and try again. When the, 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 it says in Pirkei Ovas, all Jews have portion in the world to come. Since a person can come back many times as a Gilgul, it, 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 it could be that some of the Gilgul he, he had messed up and they won't come back. They're not going to come to Olam Habo. But since he came back several times, not all your Gilgulim come back in Olam Habo. The ones which were successful come back in Olam Habo. So therefore, uh, the, uh, Ochan himself, even if he's punished this time around, perhaps next time around is going to be better. So we hope. So uh, even though Hashem says to put something that this doesn't mean they're lost for all time. I mean, see, this time we messed up. Maybe next time we better. So Hashem, Hashem says, but right now, what you have to do is you have to get, get rid of Ochan. You have to destroy him because he did this very bad thing, which is very bad for the Jewish people. Okay? So that's what Hashem tells him. You have to find out. Now, Hashem doesn't make it easy for you, Yeshua. Hashem could have made it much very easy. He could have said, I'll tell you exactly who it was. Hashem says, no, I'm not telling you who it is. You have to figure it out on your own. You have to make this lottery among the, the, the Shvatim, and another lottery among the families, another lottery among the households, and another lottery among the people. So Hashem's telling, telling Yeshua that you have to work at this. For you to fix fix fixed situation, it's not just enough that I, I tell you who, who has to go. You have to actually figure that out on your own and work at it until you come to the until you come to the right person. So part of the tshuva of Am Yisrael is that they shouldn't just sit back and wait till Hashem tells them who to kill. They should figure out on their own who did something bad and then uh, punish them on their, oh, after their own investigation. Okay. So the uh, uh, part of tshuva for Am Yisrael is to make sure that we fix as much for us on our own, not that Hashem fixes it for us. So that's, uh, uh, so uh, uh, Yoshua, Yoshua is going to do that. By Yashkem Yoshua, by Kegap, by Kegap, by Kegap, by Kegap, all the Jews together, by Shevet, by Lokat Shevet Yehuda. And the Shevet, which it fell on, was Shevet Yehuda. Okay, by Kegap, by Kegap, he took all the families of Yehuda. By Kegap, by Kegap, by Kegap, and then he, he came to the family of Zarek. He took all the men of the house of Zarchi by the Kate Zavdi. And they uh, uh and it was Zavdi, which was the household. Household was Zavdi. The, the, the households go by the men, each household was a different name, and there was household of Zavdi. Okay, was basically took the house of Zavdi, Lakvarim, the men of that house, by the and then he, he figured out. 
that the person who sinned was Achan ben Karmi ben Zavdi ben Zerach Lamate Yehuda. That's a person who stole from the king. Okay, so the Malvin says, Vaya Kravis Mishpachas Yehuda, Lamar Pove Kravis Shevet Yehuda, Mishpachas, Moshkasa Bechukulam. It, uh, it doesn't say here that he took the Shevet Yehuda for and then took their families, like it said, by all of them above. The fame Kulam Ashela, Asher Amar Vilkade. You know, actually, I'm going to skip this because this is complicated. Um, it, it gives the process how he went through it, but I don't think it's important. So I think we'll 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 leave Busky design because it just tell it's Molly. That's a very good, big detail about how they did the lottery. So I'm not, uh, uh, they put, but I'll just say it outside, which is that they brought everybody from the Orum, and the Orum would give a sign. So first the family, first the Sheva, then the family, then the house, then the persons. So the um, they didn't go through the whole family. The all, I didn't have to go through all the family. So they went in order. Ruben, Shimon, Levi. Then they got the Yehuda. Okay, so then, and the Yehuda, the Aron said, pointed out somehow, it's the, they're the ones who uh, from whom the Aron came. And so on. They went through the process until they finally got the Aron himself. So now they identified Aron. And they're going to ask Achan, uh, 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 Yeshua is going to ask Achan to confess. And that's a pusky test, but that will be ready for next time because that's already a new thing. Okay, thank you, girls. Have, uh, enjoy your time off tomorrow. Take care. See thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night.